first case we have had right-wing extremists targeting Muslims. Uh, you know, this boy is 16 years old, but he was extremely serious. Coming up tonight, how a secondary four student became radicalized online and planned attacks on Muslims in Singapore. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong urges restraint and calls on Singaporeans to celebrate Chinese New Year differently this year. And you can now enjoy concerts again thanks to COVID safe space bubbles. Must say they look pretty cool. This is the Straits Times News Night. I'm Chow Suen. Good evening. I'm Dylan Ang. And give us a follow on Instagram. Singapore's Internal Security Department made a chilling announcement this afternoon that a 16-year-old boy has been detained for planning to attack Muslims on March the 15th, the second anniversary of the Christchurch terrorist attacks. A Protestant Christian of Indian ethnicity, the Singaporean is the first detainee to be inspired by far-right extremist ideology. And he is also the youngest person held under the Internal Security Act for terrorism-related activities. Law and Home Affairs Minister K. Shamugam said the Secondary 4 student was self-radicalised and ready to fight to the end. He told ISD when we interviewed him, it was quite chilling. He told them, ISD, that uh, he saw only two outcomes for his plans. One, he could get arrested before he carries out. Or two, he will be killed by the police uh, while he was executing his plans. So he went in fully prepared, knowing that he's going to die. Uh, and he was prepared to die. The boys' intended targets were Ashafa'a Mosque in Sembawang and Yusuf Ishak Mosque in Woodlands because they were near his home. He had conducted online reconnaissance and research on both mosques to prepare for the attack. He had even mapped out his route and bought a flak jacket. His weapon of choice was a machete which he intended to buy online on Marketplace Carousel. Influenced by the Christchurch attacker Brenton Tarrant, he too wanted to livestream his planned massacre. We spoke to The Straits Times Singapore editor Zakir Hussain about what else is known about the secondary four student, what drove him to plan the attack and the speed at which he was radicalised. The attack, I think, also was motivated um, by far-right ideology, the likes of which we saw um, in the folks who stormed the Capitol in the US uh, earlier this month. But also, you know, um, going back as far as 10 years ago, um, when you had Anders Breivik, who decided to um, open fire on a summer camp in, um, in Norway because he felt uh, the political party was too multicultural and too multiracial and friendly to immigrants. Increasingly, that's, that's sort of uh, the same pattern you see in many of these self-radicalized individuals. They don't, um, they're aware that, you know, if they kind of try and spread their views to others or if they try and um, win others over, the authorities will catch on to them quite quickly. And so he made all his plans and preparations. Um, so well, not even his family knew of it. Um, and I think that's most troubling, you know, you, and, and given, given that his targets were soft targets, um, it was really a good fortune that the, um, his plans were foiled in good time. The incident has drawn a lot of concern, with many weighing in. Among them, Minister for Culture, Community and Youth, Edwin Tong. Mr. Mr. Tong called the incident a disturbing and sobering reminder that anyone, regardless of age, race and religion, is susceptible to online self-radicalisation. The Islamic Religious Council of Singapore stated that the arrest is a grim reminder of the ever-presence of the threat of online radicalisation and together with social media pervading all of our lives, it brings the danger of extremist ideologies into our homes. A similar sentiment was shared by the National Council of Churches of Singapore, who assured the public that there is no animosity between the Christian and Muslim communities and that it remains committed to defeating hatred and violence. Now, for more on this story, do visit straitstimes.com. Moving on, for the fifth day in a row, there were no new COVID-19 infections in the community. Among the 25 confirmed today, all 25 were imported and have been placed on stay-home notices on arrival here. Meanwhile, the vaccination programme for seniors began today, starting with pilots in Ang Mo Kyo and Tanjung Paga. 
And by the end of March, every one of Singapore's 24 HDB towns will have a community vaccination centre that can give 2,000 jabs per day. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong says the upcoming Chinese New Year will not be like previous years. It won't be a normal year of the ox. On his part, he will just be having a small celebration at home with no more than eight visitors. Uh, we do have to take precautions. We have to restrain ourselves. When you're low hay, please do it in your hearts. If you must have the sound, there are very good apps. You press the button and they will say the right words for you. And celebrate it in the right spirit, but keep ourselves safe so that perhaps a year from now, when the year of the tiger comes around, uh, we will be roaring like a tiger. Now let's take a look at what's been trending on social media. Praise for Sheng Xiong has poured in online following last night's news that its eligible staff will receive bonuses of up to 16 months. In an internal staff memo sent out last week, the company said the bumper bonus comes after strong earnings amid the pandemic. In an interview with The Straits Times executive editor Sumiko Tan in 2019, Sheng Xiong CEO Lim Hock Chi talks about his approach to working with others. You know, Suen, the pandemic has put a halt to many live performances, including concerts. But what if there's a way to attend a concert while being protected? Well, American rock band The Flaming Lips have come up with a creative way to continue putting on live shows by putting themselves and audiences in protective space bubbles. The group performed two concerts over the weekend in Oklahoma with about a total of 100 bubbles, each able to hold a maximum of three people. In case you're wondering, each capsule was equipped with a speaker, fan, a bottle of water, towel and a sign reading I gotta go pee slash it's hot in here to be shown to stewards who will then escort them and refill the bubbles with cool air. Honestly, how creative is that? Very creative indeed. Now, US President Joe Biden's Treasury Department is reportedly studying new ways to speed up the process of adding Harriet Tubman's portrait to the front of the $20 bill. The decision to have Tubman, a one-time slave turned abolitionist, replace Andrew Jackson as the face of the note was set in motion in 2016 under the Obama administration. It was then opposed during Trump's. It's important uh, that our notes, our, our, our money, uh, people don't know what a note is, uh, reflect the history and diversity of our country. And Harriet Tubman's image, gracing the new $20 note, would certainly reflect that. So we're exploring ways to speed up that effort. One of the animals at an American zoo found to be suffering from COVID-19 has since been successfully treated. Winston, a gorilla at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park, has recovered from the virus after receiving monoclonal antibody therapy and other treatments. The elderly silverback gorilla and eight other gorilla troop members tested positive for the virus earlier this month after showing symptoms of mild coughing, congestion, nasal discharge and intermittent lethargy. The gorillas were suspected to have been infected by an asymptomatic staff member. Now, in case you missed it, a relatively rare natural phenomenon has been spotted in Scotland. Often called ice pancakes, these naturally occurring discs of ice are found in very cold lakes and oceans, most frequently in the Baltic Sea and Antarctica. Formed when waves jostle pieces of smooth ice against each other, rounding their edges, these pancakes often eventually meld together to form sheet ice. And that wraps up the Straits Times News Night. Do visit straightstimes.com to see more news and videos. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the button below. Have a great evening and we'll see you tomorrow.